What is going on guys, Brad here from MTG Jankster, coming at you guys with yet another deck tech. Today we're going to be talking about a commander that came out of the recently released Brawl Precons from Throne of Eldraine. Today we're going to be talking about Alayla, Artful Provocateur. So for one white, blue, and a black, you get a 2-3 legendary creature, Fairy Warlock, with flying, death touch, and lifelink. That's the other creatures you control with flying get plus one, plus O. Oh. And whenever you cast an artifact or enchantment spell, create a 1-1 one, one blue fairy creature token with flying. So the deck is going to revolve around playing as many artifacts and enchantments that we can in order to make 1-1 one, one fairy tokens. A lot of the cards in the deck are going to be anthems, buffing our creatures across the board in order for us to swing out in the air and defeat our opponents. So the first part of the deck we are going to cover today are the anthem spells. Both Etchings of the Chosen and Radiant Destiny are anthems specific to a creature type, which we will choose as fairy that will buff our fairy tokens with plus one plus one. Etchings of the Chosen have the ability to pay one mana to give target creature indestructible until end of turn, granting Alila some protection in case she gets targeted with removal. And Radiant Destiny will also give our fairy tokens vigilance as long as we control the city's blessing, which is rather easy in, in a commander game. Then we have some anthems that can be played at instant speed. Force of Virtue and Dictated Heliod are anthems with flesh that can be played at any time. Force of Virtue will give our creatures plus one plus one and can be played for free by exiling a white card from our hand. And Dictated Heliod gives our creatures plus two plus two. Next we are playing Spear of Heliod and True Conviction. Spear of Heliod will give our creatures plus one plus one and we can pay three mana and tap the spear to destroy a creature that dealt damage to us, serving us as a removal spell as well. And True Conviction is one of the best cards in the deck, giving our creatures double strike and lifelink. And the best enchantment in the deck that will buff our creatures is Cathar's Crusade. Any deck that is playing tokens or just a lot of creatures is going to benefit from this card. Any time a creature would enter the battlefield, we get to put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control. This isn't a temporary buff that can be removed if our enchantments get destroyed, or even if our anthems get destroyed. These are permanent buffs that can only be taken away by destroying each individual creature. Next we have some creature based anthem spells that are going to also have some utility. Avon Wind Guide is a creature for 4 mana that gives creature tokens flying and vigilance. Giving flying to fairies that already have it is a little overkill, but vigilance is a rather underrated keyword, making sure our creatures can both attack our opponents and defend us after we do so. It also has Embalm for 6 and we can bring it back from our graveyard if it gets destroyed. We are also playing Heliod, God of the Sun, and Afara, God of the Polis. Heliod will give our creatures vigilance and be able to make 2-1 creatures if we need them, and Afara will help us draw more cards when we play our anthem spells. In the last part of the deck, we are going to be playing some artifacts and enchantments that serve as pure utility for us. Starting with Esther's Invocation and Mirror Maid, both of these cards can become copies of any enchantment that we have on the battlefield. Esther's Invocation can change into a different enchantment every turn if we need it to, and Mirror Maid can even copy an artifact. Then we are playing Land Tax and Smothering Tithe. In a deck that isn't playing green, making sure that we hit our land drops and ramp is rather important. Land Tax will help us get our lands into our hand to make sure that we have one to play every turn, as well as thin out our deck so we don't have to draw lands late game. And Smothering Tithe will create treasures we can sack for mana whenever an opponent draws a card and doesn't want to pay the two mana for it. Next we have Propaganda, Ghostly Prison, and Sphere of Safety in order to protect us from being attacked. We want to be able to set up our anthems and make creature tokens without falling behind, and these cards will prevent our opponents from attacking us so we can preserve our life total. Then we are playing Arcanist Owl, one of my favorite uncommons from Throne of Eldraine. When it enters the battlefield, we can look at the top four cards of our library and reveal an artifact or enchantment from among those cards and put it into our hand. A lot of the time we will be hitting something since most of our decks is artifact or enchantments, and a lot of the time we are going to be getting one of the anthems that we have in our deck. Next we have Midnight Clock, another new card from Throne of Eldraine. It serves as a mana rock by tapping it for a blue, but also says we can put an hour counter on it during each upkeep. When there are 12 hour counters on Midnight Clock, it gets exiled and we shuffle our hand and graveyard into our deck and draw seven new cards. This is a great card late game when we are running out of gas and our board keeps getting destroyed, we can put all of our cards back into our deck and draw seven brand new cards. And finally, we have a land that will help out late a lot too. Hall of Heliod's Generosity can tap for a mana, but we can also pay one and a white to tap the hall and put an enchantment card from our graveyard on top of our library. And that's all I have for you guys today for Alayla, Artful Provocateur. She really is a fun new way to play tokens outside of green, and having a commander that makes tokens for playing spells is really neat. Out of the four Brawl Precon Legends that were released, she probably is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, and is honestly the least popular out of the four. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to drop a like and hit the subscribe button for more deck techs. Click the little bell icon as well to be notified anytime I post a deck tech. My name is Brad from MTG Jankster, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.